Hello. Okay, so I've never done this before. Um, can you hear me? Hey. <laughs> hey, hello. Great. So does anybody have any questions for me? Can my lips even, can you see me? I can just turn it round so that you can see me better. Okay, so here I am. Hi. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, my relationship with the King's Head Theatre is relatively recent. I have very good friends who've done a lot of good shows there. I've gone to the King's Head Theatre since I was young, since it opened, more or less. I think it opened in like seven, uh, I guess, it opened in 1970. And, um, and I've been going there since I was a teenager. So I was, uh, that would have been the late 70s. And, um, and that's, that's, that's what I've been doing. And, uh, the, um, and then um, I've done a couple of plays at the King's Head recently. Um, done uh, the amazing Tom Wright wrote this wonderful play called Undetectable. And we worked together from its inception um, and uh, so uh, I naturally became the director of it and uh, I directed it at the King's Head. And I also have directed um, another fantastic piece by Alexis Gregory called uh, Riot Act, um, which was also at the King's Head for a few performances. Um, and um, Undetectable has been at the King's Head twice. I also directed a, another play, um, uh, 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 by Rena Br Renee Brannan, which is called, um, oh, it's the place where, it's the place where Washington was born. I forgot, completely forgotten what it was called. Um, but uh, we did that a couple of years ago as well. And we're good. Let's see, I'm looking, I'm trying to get used to all these messages. Oh, I've got a lot of books on my bookshelf. Is that my go-to place to find plays to direct? And um, no, because I don't do any plays that are, I have never do old plays. I've never done any. I've done one. That's not true. For a drama school, I directed Earthquakes in London, and um, which is not an old play, but a 10 years old play. And um, otherwise, I only work with, um, with new, director, new writers and work with them I, I'm usually the first director that's directed their play, or close to it. Ah, hey, Paul. Um, so my books here, are, I've got a lot of books in my flat. This is just about half of them. And these are my art books. So at the top, it's all photography books. Can you see up there? It's all photography books. And then um, in the middle, it becomes kind of arts books. And then on the lower bit, just above the keyboards and stuff, that's all um, graphic novels and fashion books. So I use a lot of these for my design ideas and my creative ideas when I design a piece or, um, or just give me uh, or, uh, creative ideas for, for writing my pieces and directing them. And down here is like biographies, big colour biographies, fashion books again, um, and kind of big coffee table books about sexuality or history or uh, the black experience or movies or fitness and exercise i'm just teaching an exercise class um, on zoom which is why 
you saw some of you that I'm in my shorts. And uh, that's a shot for you there. And um, so that's what my books are there. And all my, all my, um, uh, my smaller history books and reference books and biographies and, um, and of course, novels, etc., are down the end of, in my hallways. We've got, it's another big bookshelf down there. Uh, well, London's missing you, Paul. Have I got advice for new writers to connect with potential directors? Yes, go and see their work um, and um, so that you know who you're talking to and, and connect with them there. Try and go to their first nights um, and, and uh, network. Networking isn't this kind of creepy schmoozy thing that people seem to think it is. It's actually making friends in the school playgrounds. So go to the playgrounds and make friends. They're out there playing football or playing theatre and go and, and meet them on, and get friends to introduce you to people um, and just be out there doing stuff and um, or write to them and, um, and invite them to see your work or, or, um, or ask for a, a single piece of advice, not a big, don't make a lot of work for them. There are people are out there and, um, and I'm very, very easy to connect with. I'm walking down the street. I'm, I'm there almost every single show I, di I direct. I'm there for almost every single performance. I'm very um, interested in meeting new writers and being excited by them. I do workshops for writers. In fact, I'm doing a big Zoom workshop tonight for about three hours, probably. And that's going to be about um, coming tonight. It's called I've been doing them every Sunday and Wednesday through the lockdown and th they're completely free. And th this one is about um, what's the big idea? So coming up with the big idea that you need to write your piece or direct your piece or produce your piece or create your piece, film, theatre, television, um, any kind of creative um, endeavour, because I tend to be spread across all of those. So it's very easy, but you have to reach out. And also don't just randomly reach out, actually learn about this person, Google them, get to know what they do, get connected with them and try and, um, and treat them like a person and not like a, a um, a rung on a ladder or a door to your career, treat them like an actual human being and um, you'll make something magical together. And I'm disappearing over here. On the, okay. Ah, well, you said, uh, Paul saying, Paul Lucas is saying, it's been so fun to see Dickie Bo showing up in so many movies. I've always loved him and your show so many years ago. Yeah, he, he uh, Dickie Bo or, or, um, is such an amazing, amazing actor. I wrote a play for him and two other amazing actors back when they were really young, called, um, uh, which was called Sweet and uh, um, set in South London on the South London estates that I was, that I came from. And, um, and Richard was literally, is such an amazing person to write for um, because every single line I gave him was gold. They were all brilliant actors and, and I cast my things first and then write for them. And, um, and, and Dickie Bo, or Richard as I call him, has, um, was working at the production company that made my TV series Metrosexuality and that's how I got to know him. And then he invited me to see him do his work and I became a big fan and then I asked him if I could write a play for him and I did. Oh. Okay, so let's see. I don't know. My phone's in the wrong place, apparently. I'm not sure how, to, how I can make this work. Hang on. Got a lot of books. There's more books here on the table. So I will use them. Hang on. I'm not doing it. Okay. So it's gonna work. No, that's a book. Okay. Okay. We're good. That's not so noisy now, I hope. Uh, okay, can I talk a bit about how I started my career and got into theater in the first place? So um, if you go on YouTube and you type in Ricky Bermondsey, um, if you spell my name right, R-I-K-K-I, Ricky Beetle Blair Bermondsey, and, and write free school. I went to what a, a free school in Bermondsey, with free, not a free school like they have now where they're kind of like, 
new kind of version of a grammar school. That in in the when I was growing up in the I was a teenager in the seventies and uh, and so there were lots of hippies um, who were amazing people who um, kind of dropped out from the mainstream and created these alternative schools and um, and I went to one. And so I could turn up when I wanted to, go home when I wanted to, ask any question I wanted to, so I, and create my own curriculum. So I wrote plays all the time and made films. And that it turned out that Nationwide, which was the big kind of six o'clock news roundup show that lasted for half an hour on BBC, came and did a documentary about my school or a piece, like 10 minute um, documentary piece about my school. It's so long ago, it's in black and white. And it shows me at the age of 11 or 12 directing a play. So I've always done it. I wanted to be a writer when I was three. I decided to be a playwright when I was seven. I started writing plays when I was nine. And then when I joined the free school at 11, I just made plays all the time. And, um, and that's what I spent the rest of my time doing. And then when I left um, school at 15, because my school collapsed because it was completely unfunded and lived, went hand to mouth, um, I, by then I was ready for the world anyway, and I started going to places like Anna Scher Children's Theatre in Islington and, um, and, and uh, various things like that. And so I just filled my life with making theatre and I've always done that ever since, making my own companies, making my own way. I've created, I've really kind of carved my own path and haven't really been um, swept up by the mainstream on a regular basis. So I've always made my own work. More questions? Let's see. Ah, people are my create. So the question is, where do you find creative inspiration day to day? And um, people are my big um, inspiration. I love people. I work with people a lot. I love, I love doing big workshops with lots of people. I travel around the country and around the world doing those and working at film festivals and stuff. Obviously I'm making shows. I go to the shows all the time and meet my audiences. I work a lot with actors. Actors are incredibly inspiring because I cast them first, then I write for them, including for TV. Um, so to me, inspiration is absolutely everywhere. It's in everyone you meet. It's in every person you meet. Oh, there's a message from Margaret saying she loves my work. Margaret Tully, if it's the same Margaret, is, um, was a, is an amazing actor who I was in youth theatre with when I was um, 15, which is when my school ended, I started going to the old Vic Youth Theatre. And, and Margaret is an amazing actress. And I wrote play, play, play a part for her in a play a few years ago, which she smashed. And so Margaret's my inspiration. People, you're my inspiration. But meeting people, um, chatting to people, stealing their cat personalities, stealing the stories that they tell me e either overtly or just through their body language. I'm constantly looking. I, there's more stories in my head and in my uh, beating inside me than I think I'll ever get to tell. And one of the reasons I mentor a lot of writers and start and direct their pieces or just help them get them on is so that more of those stories can get out there, the ones that I possibly won't have time to write the, uh, you know, the stories of, about from all the different perspectives, the women's stories, the Asian stories, the old people's stories, the younger people's stories, the Tory stories, all the stuff that I'm, um, that, that I don't really know. Uh, do I have a piece that I am most proud of working on? Um, are there questions coming here through? Uh, no, uh, yeah, just checking that I'm not missing anybody out on, uh, what's that one? That's, that's Instagram. So do I have a piece of work that I'm most proud of working on that's been particularly pivotal for you? That really is, I'm afraid I'm gonna cheat and say it really is like being a mum that's asked to which one of your children do you love most? And you know, I love the funny one makes me laugh and the, the, the vulnerable one makes, me, makes my heart sing. And the, you know, all my different pieces that I've worked on have been very special. And I've had some big turning point moments. I, obviously having my own TV series, Metro Sexuality, which I got to write and direct and be in, was a huge moment. Um, and it's interesting you know, how people now talk about how influential it was at the time, because it, it definitely confused a lot of critics at the time and audiences. And I'm very proud of that. And it's a big, big um, adventure with a lot of amazing people that that had grown up with me and now were on TV with me. Um, there's Stonewall, the movie that I got to write 
um, and, and Nigel Finch directed for the BBC, which made my career international. So now when I work in America, it's directly attributable to being the writer of that film um, because they all thought I was an American. And so I could go over there and work, which I do. Um, working on Noah's Ark, the black and gay American TV series, is a groundbreaking piece and that has kept repaying me. And the work I've done with Patrick, like his movie, um, uh, that uh, his movie Blackbird, which which we had Doss Gwyn and Monique in, that was huge. I mean, right now, the pieces I'm doing right now, I think Undetectable is incredible. All the work I'm doing with Tom, it's been like a trilogy of things so far. It's all, he's an amazing person, amazing writer, and um, and teaches me so much. Um, I, you know, I, I feel like I mentor him, but he is, like everyone I mentor, he's teaching me so much. That, you know, I could just go on and on and on. Hashtag Lighty, the piece I did with Lynette Linson, who's now the artistic director at the Bush Theatre. Working on that piece with her was a massive game changer, seeing her grow in, within five years from being a, a neophyte to being the, the youngest artistic director in the country. Just so many amazing moments keep happening. But of course, the best is in front of me. Yeah, thank you. Blackbird was beautiful. Thank you. We worked really hard on that. It took 10 years to get that film made. Um, and so the, um, it, 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 that's a very special piece. And, and I loved that book when I was in my 20s. So I've been waiting to have the honor to adapt that, that book. I've waited for like 30 years. Okay. Um, so question is, are there any other peer directors or ones you've not met whose work inspire you? Well, my best friend, Robert Shavara, is an incredible director. He's directed a lot of The King's Head. He directed, um, so that's another connection, because I've been there. I, I mean, I go to The King's Head to see stuff all the time and have for years, but he, he directed an amazing uh, uh, production of, um, uh, of, of uh, Lionel Bart's musical, um, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, or was it called Quasimodo? Anyway, it was about Quasimodo. And um, that was fantastic. Um, and Robert d directs tennis. Um, Tennessee Williams is my favorite writer and Robert directs him. I wouldn't even dare to direct Tennessee Williams because Robert does it so well. So there's, uh, uh, you know, I'm best friends with a lot of talented directors like Lynette, who's just a st stunning person, stunning director. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Um, what am I looking at? Uh, so, okay, I, I oh, uh, by the way, Jordan said something about the community, of, of, about being creative amongst the community is incredibly important to me. Um, um, all my friends are artists and creatives. There's a few kind of civilians in there, but uh, they, they all kind of got creative mentalities. Got a friend who's in the army, you know, stuff like that. But the um, but they've all got creative mentality and appreciation. And to me, being part of a family, I have my company team, Angelica, which has this gr big group of directors and writers and musicians and and um, and of course loads and loads of actors. And so they are. I'm close to so many of them, and that it really is an important thing to be part of a family. When I work in a project, I really like to have a family feel that everybody is here together, that like it's not just me and then the minions, you know, it's me in as one of the siblings of a, of this, you know, I'm just one of the louder siblings in a family. Though ironically, I'm not loud when I'm at home, I'm very shy, but not when I'm working. More questions? Why don't I see any questions coming through the, the Instagram? Uh, let's see. I don't know, just have to come through the king's head. More questions, anybody? Hmm, I don't know if I've got any more questions. Am I still on? Well, I'll just do some waving at people. They're here. So 
So this is, is this a, how does this become a, as a director, are there any, sorry, I'm just learning how to do all this. As a director, are there techniques you use in the room to foster that collaborative environment? Yes, I bring food. So in my rehearsal rooms, there's usually a table. I like a big table. So several tables put together usually. And then we spend a lot of time around the table talking about our lives, talking about our days, talking about our joking, showing videos to each other, sometimes about the subject of the play. Um, sometimes we go down rabbit holes, but I'm creating an atmosphere where everybody who comes in the room, whether they're an observer, a shadow, as they might call them, or an assistant director, of course, um, or, or anyone, anyone who's just in the room. And if someone's brought biscuits and they're just dropping them off, anybody can come come and get join in the conversation and um, get involved with uh, with what with the process. So everybody has a voice. And that's really, really important. And, and of course, I get arrogant and think my voice is the most important one. And I am the pilot of the plane. So I have to make the final decisions. But my job is to really keep open and keep and understand that there are geniuses in the room and that I have to look for that and hear that and connect with that so that I can get, you know, because I'll get the credit for it. So, you know, so why not just absolutely value everybody's opinion and everybody's um vibe in the room that's really important but that's in life you know i go and see theater all the time i go out almost every night and sometimes lunch times to to see people's shows and films and their work and and encourage and i follow people on twitter and i you know i i i cheerlead and even if i don't sometimes like the piece but i love that the person did it and that they have this great intention i respect that because of course i probably will fall in love with the piece once i'm my my Neanderthal brain catches up and I realize that they're doing something new and I'm just looking for something old. That happens a lot. Just keeping it fresh and just always being there and, and, and not seeing, no one is a rival. Just, they're just, we're, we're all on the same team. We're all trying to make the world better through art. And so I really like being part of a community. I've never been a big part of the kind of mainstream community, but I think people know me and people are very kind to me. And, um, and I get lots of hugs and I get lots of uh, kind words. So, you know, it's, it, 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 I'm out there. Let's see. Once a play is open, do you have any advice for directors and actors about how to keep it fresh every night? Yes. Um, I'm, not, I'm a big fan in directing the characters and not the actors. So once the characters, are my, once I get the actors to be comfortable enough to build and feel uncomfortable and brave enough to create their characters and trust their characters um, as living creatures, living beings, then the idea is that they really have to react in the moment. So of course I have specific things that I think will be funny or moving that I talk to them about. But they are in the end, they're, they're up there. So especially something like Undetectable, which we just did. If you saw it more than once, the moves are slightly different every night. They have a, their own look. I've taught them the kind of style of the choreography and they are now playing with how to make sure the audience can see them, but how they can approach each other in new, fresh ways so that it feels like the first night every night and that they feel like they're reacting to each other, you know, as uh, potential lovers, as human beings, every night and to keep it fresh. So one of the reasons I like seeing my shows almost every night is because they're always slightly different. And I give actors a lot of leeway, uh, bearing in mind they've got cues to hit and lights to hit, you know, light marks to hit and, you know, song cues to sing or whatever, that there's, there's a lot of freedom in you, tonight, you can shout it tomorrow, you can whisper it. As long as they always know who the character is, then the character has a different mood each day, depending on the weather and depending on their mood and depending what the other actor is giving them. And so it should feel like a living thing. You, sh you shouldn't see the same show every night because that's for movies. I love making movies, but then that's a piece that you set. And, um, and, and um, so it's a photograph of a garden, whereas theatre, you're in the garden and the garden is growing every night and changing and things are, are fading and things are blooming. 
with questions. Okay, got the last couple of questions, I guess. I don't know. I can go on forever, so I don't want to get too greedy. Um, anybody can write a question. You can just type it in to the comments and I can read them. That's how I get the questions. Are there any old that I've missed? So is, is there's amazing people in here. There's the amazing uh, Paul Lucas, who's this incredible writer. Did I think you did transcripts, didn't you? There's amazing people in this room. It's, you know, I, I don't know why I'm being interviewed when Paul Lucas is in the room. Is Robert Shabara in the room? Well, I mean, that's somebody that should be, you should be asking him questions. Um, I'm mean, going to ask a question as soon as I'm asking me one. Or am I missing them? Paul, are you working on something now? Paul, okay. So many of your amazing people have become stars that you work with. What are you doing now? I don't see anything. <laughs> this is so funny. Okay, so it's a final question. Um, so what are my hopes for the industry post lockdown? <laughs> well, my hopes for the industry are what they've always been, um, that it will become, that, that there'll be more creativity, um, more, diversity is a word that is overused, I know, but I mean true diversity. I don't mean, diversity for me doesn't just mean more black people. It means more um, East Asian people, Chinese and, and, um, uh, um, uh, and, and South Asian people being involved in theater. Um, I would like there to, I, I would like it to, I would like more theater to reflect um, Joan Littlewood's pr uh, process, which was, you know, get people, get the working classes into the theater and have them sit have the, the, the class system sit together and see each other in each other and know each other and respect each other uh, together in the same spaces. Um, the I would like to see that. I would like to see more new theatres come up. Um, I would like more, more new writing. Um, I, obviously, the canon is really important, but so many theatres are basically the same theatre. Everybody's trying to be like the National Theatre, the same play. You can see the same plays go from theatre to theatre over the over the over a decade, and so everyone is doing Lorca and everybody's doing um, doing uh, Arthur Miller, and those are all important, exciting writers that I love. But I'm really I want to. We should be making um, the new Mark Miller. We should be making the new Lorca. There should be much more development of writers. Um, uh, it takes years to develop a writer. The writers I developed, Alexis and and, um, and, and, and Lynette and Tom and uh, lots of others that I'm working with. It takes years, it takes three, four years to get their first play. It, it can't, you can't do it in just one summer um, and then you, you, that's your intake and then you get rid of them and you get the next one in so you can get your grant. It's about actual investment in people and in their work and in their vision and, and, and working with them while they do bad drafts or bad plays. And, but with the faith that they will make great theatre and great plays, which they do. And I want this to do much more of that. I want them to, I want them to realise that the cleaning lady at the National Theatre might have a great play in her or him and, uh, or them and, and get those stories out there. So, and encourage um, much more unity, much more insight, 
much more humanity, much more accessibility, and yet it, within challenging ideas and challenging motifs. And, um, and of course, I want there to be more visibility for um, sexually and gender diverse people. Um, but it's everybody. I, I feel like I feel like um, that everybody needs to be challenged and everybody needs to be represented, even if it is Lawrence Fox or it is um, Piers Morgan. Um, they, we need to lose our sense of grievances and, um, and represent everybody so that everybody does feel heard. Because when people feel unheard and they feel insignificant, they overcompensate and they become Trump. And we don't need any more Trumps. We need more um, realized human beings in the world and art is the perfect place to do that. And entertainment is the perfect place to do that. And theatre is like the King's Head and, um, and the theatres that I hope some of you will make in your living rooms or in some shop front somewhere or take over one day. That we should, that's what we should do. We need, so what needs to come out of this lockdown is what should have been there beforehand, which is people um, valuing one another and representing one another and taking uh, and being curious about one another and um and uh making this world uh, where not a world with no anger and no negativity but just one where love predominates and understanding proliferates i guess that's it thank you for um coming and hanging out with me for um an hour a half an hour just a little while like i said i'm doing a workshop tonight anybody wants to who has, is creative and wants to work on a new idea and wants to get better at pitching their ideas to themselves and coming up with stuff. I'm doing that tonight. The King's Head obviously is this amazing place and um, it, we will all reopen eventually. And so you will see me there and, uh, and we'll, um, we'll celebrate our art together and entertain one another. Um, please uh, write to me if you want, if you have a question you're too shy to ask or you couldn't get through. My email is ricky, R-I-K-K-I, at teamangelica.com. Um, thank you and goodbye. Mwah. Mwah.